Montana State University welcomes you to this short video series on anaerobic digestion for small and mid-sized farms. We are convinced that anaerobic digestion is an excellent strategy to convert farm waste into biogas and biofertilizer. This work has been supported by the National Institute of Food and Agriculture through their Western Agriculture Research and Education Program. Anaerobic digestion gets you two fantastic products, biogas and biofertilizer. Today we will be talking about the best uses of both of them on your farm. As far as anaerobic digestion technology goes, I absolutely recommend it. I think we should stop using septic tanks. I think everything should be an anaerobic digester. I don't know why we let anything get out in the environment that we're not. We could reuse everything that comes out of a digester. One of, as I've mentioned, the cool things about anaerobic digestion is that it's also energy production. Uh, even, you know, when our food waste and things like that go to the landfill and they are anaerobically digested in the landfill, uh, they produce methane gas and that's a um, really potent um, greenhouse gas that uh, contributes to climate change. And so if we can capture that and turn it into energy and at least get some more use out of it, I think that that's an important thing to prioritize. Uh, we need to figure out ways that we can keep close the loop and keep those nutrients in the community for use on our soils. Um, so we're not depending on um, nitrogen fertilizers and others that are based in fo fossil fuels as well. Actually, the, the, the solids component generated cash income. Um, the electrical component generated a reduction in our electrical bill. Okay. Uh, and the Fertilize, the liquid fertilizer pro produce um, into our irrigation system would replace some of our commercial fertilizer. There are several benefits to anaerobic digestion. Um, they uh, can lower your carbon footprint and pollution given that you're taking food waste and you're repurposing it into energy and nutrients. As far as the transportation goes, Producing our nutrients and our energy on farm um, means that it doesn't have to travel far distances using more fuel. What's really important is that we know we need to build the soil organic matter on our farms and um, using farm residues for building biofertilizer and applying it back onto the soils can really help with crop quality and food composition. And so from a consumer perspective, having really rich uh, soil is linked to having rich crop quality, um, which can have tremendous benefits for human health, um, including mitigating diet-related chronic disease. In theory, I can just open the spigot and just let that digestate go out and kind of have like a little Garden of Eden being, you know, formed around me because you're re-adding those micronutrients, you're adding the microbacterial, uh, um, the microbacteria back into the soil. Uh, and you're really bringing things back to life. So that's almost more important than the methane. Well, the, the first thing that, that, that gave us a hint is we began using it on our own gardens. It was fantastic. Then we started developing, what do we need to do to put it in a package and sell it? And the, our bag products sold very well at the, at the various nurseries and retail outlets, but that was actually a, a good advertising leader and people would buy a bag or two and then they'd come get a truckload or two. and it's really good fertilizer. You mix it at a ratio of usually like 10 to one, 10 parts water to one part digestate, and that'll give you a great organic nutrient solution that you can create a whole lot of. The liquid portion of the biofertilizer is very nitrogen rich. The exact, uh, uh, exactly what's in it will depend on what you put into your biodigester. What you put in determines what you get out. A lot of manure will get you a lot of nitrogen, a lot of plant waste will get you a lot of micronutrients uh, that can be very useful for farming. Um, you can also apply this folially if you want to, which makes it a very interesting product. I think the most important thing here is that 
uh, it represents a way by which we can generate uh, on-farm biofertilizers. Uh, so the idea that uh, we reduce the off-farm inputs, uh, most in the forms of chemical, synthetic chemical inputs, and replace them with byproducts uh, from the farms uh, will uh, or could represent an alternative source to um, uh, minimize the use of synthetic nutrients uh, and hopefully enhance uh, soil uh, nutrient uh, quality, soil biological quality, and uh, hopefully net revenues. Biogas uh, is made up of mostly methane and carbon dioxide. It can be burned directly for heating, uh, but can also be used for electricity production. Um, and then both of these products, uh, and like the electricity you can generate from this, can be sold as a sort of other pro for, as a, another revenue stream, if you want to, which makes it a very nice sort of value-added system for processing your waste instead of just throwing it away. We actually have a little heater uh, that came with our system. Uh, it's kind of like a little, you know, a propane stand heater, uh, but instead of propane, it would be biogas, and we set that up and actually ran it. It's got to see the really beautiful blue flame coming off of it. That biogas especially makes it interesting. Um, oh, I'm blanking it. Makes it an interesting comparison to compost, depending on your circumstances. Right about now is really the beginning of us putting things in our compost pile. And the first things that we're going to put in our compost pile this time of year are going to be kind of big root ball and stem of things like broccoli and cauliflower plants. Um, as the season progresses, we'll have more and more. Uh, large amounts of materials, uh, plant materials that we're not going to eat, that we don't want to leave in the field. And it's really for us more about disposing of and getting rid of that material, killing weed seeds, killing any plant pathogens that are present than it is soil fertility. When our organic inspector comes to me and says, what you call compost, we actually can't call compost because you don't turn it frequently enough. And I don't turn it because I don't have time to. Um, it makes me wonder uh, if our compost pile is going anaerobic um, and that's releasing methane into the atmosphere. Should we be doing that in a way that is contained and we can at least capture that methane? Uh, that's certainly something rolling around in the back of my head when I, when I look at our compost pile. You still put a lot of energy into taking care of that compost pile if you're really composting. Um, so a digester is nice. The, the vision is you know being able to pull up with the tractor, dump that load into it, let it do its thing, get the effluent out, and not really have to deal with any of those problems. So we're turning this compost pile to keep it aerobic. Uh, to be honest, here in the middle of July, we haven't had enough rain that it's really doing much at all anaerobic. But in the case of an open system like this, I want to keep it aerobic. Aerobic decomposition of these residues is going to result in some of the carbon present here being lost to carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. So if you could tell me that you had a system that uh, retained the nitrogen or could capture the carbon in a form where I can use it or prevent it from going into the atmosphere as a greenhouse gas, that would be of interest to me for sure. There's a, a potential benefit from the standpoint of weathering supply chain dynamics and challenges for farmers uh, be, because there's an output uh, uh, that can offset uh, fertilizer costs on farm. Uh, there's a potential benefit from the standpoint of diversifying farm income or, or um, creating a, a parallel or a supplemental farm enterprise. So it's not, it's not a very well-developed marketplace. Uh, and there's not a great deal of diversification of application around AD in the US. Uh, that's not, as you know, that's that's not the case in, in other places in the world. Uh, but we we have a very large, very dynamic marketplace, and and there is a there is an abundance of organic waste streams that would be suitable for this kind of solution. Would you do it again, knowing what you know now? <laughs> would, would absolutely. You? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. I'd do a few things differently. Well, but you, but that's because of experience. <laughs>